21, 22, 23. Oh, hi, uh, welcome back to Training with Tranny. And my name is Paul Tranny. And aside from my little workout, what I'd love to show you is the code hinting and all of the powerful features you have when you're writing code in Flash. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this file. And it's pretty straightforward, uh, but let me give you a little background. Because here's a, a smiley face, and what I want to do is I want this smiley face to appear in different places on the screen. And not only that, but as I double click in it, I want it to display a different smiley face, a different quote uh, for this health club. So uh, that's the setup for what I want to do. And it's going to require a sort of a custom class. It's going to require uh, a, lot, a fair amount of code, I should say. So where I'm going to start off is in my timeline panel, uh, the actions layer. As I select that first frame, I can go to window and open up my actions panel. So it's really a good practice to comment all your code. So again, I want to create a timer class that executes every two seconds and shows a different smiley face. And this is going to, again, require the timer class. And not only that, it's going to reposition and change the uh, movie clip at random. So that's my agenda. All right, I'm going to start off by creating this timer class. And I'm going to start off by creating a variable called my timer. And as I hit that colon, I get this code pop up. So now I have the ability to go ahead and locate timer. That's what I want to use is this timer class. Watch what happens when I hit enter. It not only completes the word, but it adds this import statement right here. So uh, what Flash is doing is it's, it's going to go out and grab all of that code that I didn't have to write, and it's going to put it in my file. Uh, but again, I didn't have to worry about any misspellings or any of that. Uh, it's all right in there at my fingertips. All right, just finish this out. The new timer is what I'm going to use. And then within these two parentheses is where I want to put how long it's going to execute. In this case, two seconds, which is actually uh, 2,000 milliseconds. That's how often uh, this is going to execute. All right, next step is to go ahead and uh, let's take a look at event listeners. Because for my timer, you're probably going to want to add an event listener, which is almost like the backbone for uh, code when it comes to uh, action script, if you ask me. But notice how I can easily select it. It adds it. And literally, I'm not typing anything. I'm not, other than using my arrow keys, I'm just selecting options. And notice how I'm including that timer event. Well, when I include that timer event, it actually adds that import statement up there as well. Again, the less typing I do, the, the less chance there are errors. So uh, timer change smiley. There's my event listener. Now I need to go ahead and write my function. Change smiley. That is a timer event. Again, anytime you get that pop up, you just select that item, hit enter, and there it is. Void. And then watch when I add this opening curly brace. When I hit return, it automatically adds that closing curly brace. Uh, it may see, seem like something simple, but that will really get you out of a lot of jams. So I'm glad it adds that. Now I can, of course, just to throw in a quick trace statement, just so I know that it, of course, works. And I will go ahead and run this file. Now, there is one thing I did not add, and that is the my timer start method. So as I type in my timer start, there it is. I select it, hit enter, and I will save this file. Now let's run it. There it is. And we can see in the output panel, it starts to print out that word that I had in the trace statement. 
All right, so I have the structure down and I'm dealing with some, uh, some flash classes, but what about uh, potentially a custom class I might have created? Uh, well, I'm gonna point you to uh, how that works by first off just hiding flash and going to my desktop. Here's my flash file that I'm working on and let me go ahead and open up that com folder. Because inside of that com folder is that utilities folder and inside of there is that random num as file. So a custom class that I wrote and I'll double click on it and what it does is it has this function in there called get random num. It's going to get a random number based on the start and end parameters that I define as I use this function. So again, that's just a custom class that's written. Now I'll go back into my flash file and I'm going to start to use it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is right up here is I want to create a, another variable called random num. And I'm going to use that custom class. So as I type in that colon and start to type in random num, I love this. I love how it shows me that custom class. Very powerful locates it, I just select it, hit return, it adds the word, and not only that, it adds that import, uh, basically that import statement pointing to that specific folder that I actually defined. Uh, very powerful being able to do this. So again, same method, uh, random num, there it is, and there's my variable. All right, so far so good. Now I want to go ahead and use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit some return so I can come down inside of this function and this is where I can use this variable. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another variable called frame num. Just a, it's a number and I'm going to make it equal to the random num, again, defined here. Remember that uh, function that I defined earlier? I'll just type that period, and there it is. It appears right at the top of my list. I can go ahead and use it just by selecting it. Bam, there it is. And now it even gives me code hinting for my own custom class, particularly this function. So I can add a start. Start, uh, you know, your sort of your between number one and between numbers num one and six, the start and end go ahead and pick a random number. Because for frame num, that's the variable I want to use for my smiley face. All right, so let me just jump out here, locate uh, my smiley face, again, called smiley face, so I'll just copy that, go back to my code, right in here, paste that name in. Again, it's, it's helpful to copy and paste, uh, just eliminate any errors. Smiley face, go to and stop, and then go ahead and pick, or actually use frame num, just like that. So whatever number is in here, which is a random number, go ahead and use right here. All right, looks pretty good, but the final test is, of course, when you test your movie. All right, so all it's going to do is swap out those um, various movie clips actually jumps to that specific frame and shows me that uh, that quote. So it's like it's swapping out quotes. Uh, very powerful, works out great from a custom class that I made. Of course, the timer class is a built-in class, uh, looks good. Uh, and the next step would to be to uh, sort of reposition uh, the smiley face, uh, both uh, its X and Y position. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in that code. And here it just gets a random X position number and a Y position number, and then of course moves the smiley face based on those uh, two variables. And I'll just run this for our final result. So as you can see, the smiley face repositions and goes to a different quote randomly every two seconds. But those are just a couple of the code enhancements that are in Flash CS5 Professional. So join me again next time.